Okay, so let's really quickly talk about lighting a spaceship in Blender. This method works in both EV and cycles. I'll show you some things that only work in cycles, uh, but for the most part, this will work in both. Uh, so I'm just going to add a sunlight. I'm going to angle it just so it's sort of... Actually, let's switch the render on. Okay, so by default, the sunlight is a little bit dull. It's not very bright. Its default strength is 1. I'm going to set that to something high, like 15 usually works, so you get a nice bright highlight there. And uh, if you look at my render settings, I've got Bloom turned on in Eevee, so you get this cool little reflection uh, on here. Now, one thing I should note, and it's very important for the way I light things in space, is uh, if you go down under the rendering tab here to color management and make sure your view transform is set to filmic. If you don't do that, if you do it on standard, it tends to clip really badly in the highlights. The great thing about Filmic is it allows you to use sort of real life uh, brightness values in your scene um, without clipping, unless you go really, really high. We put this to like 100, you might get some clipping there. And even then it still kind of holds it. So let's put it back down to, let's say 20, just to be a little crazy. Okay, and um, one of the things that I tend to also do is, I tend to light my ships sort of, not entirely backlit, but almost backlit and a little bit from the front, but by putting it sort of behind the ship like that from the camera's perspective, not this camera, just from our perspective, um, what you it kind of highlights the ship in a nice way. It gives it a little bit of, pulls it out from the background. And so by default, you can see we're getting this bright light and then some fill over here on this side. Uh, and that's from the world color, uh, which I tend to leave as black, or I'll set the world up as actually having a star background, so that won't really be all that helpful. You can use this entirely, and if you look at the way that my Star Wars render was, it's very simple. It's this light and some fill light. I did it a few different ways in that, um, but you can do it this way, where you just sort of brighten up the world, and then if you're using a, uh, let's go down here to film turn on the transparent background, then you can put stars behind that. The problem with this is if you have reflective objects like this glass, uh, it'll kind of get, you'll just reflect this big gray nothing, which is going to look strange if there's anything else back there besides gray. So I tend not to do it that way. I'm going to set that to black. Real quick, let me turn off this floor. That's annoying. Okay. And so there's two different ways that you can go about this. If you do it in cycles, you can go into the, where is it, the world settings and turn on ambient occlusion. And then you can dial this back to get some nice fill light in there. And that, that will work, um, but it won't work in Eevee. And I don't, I usually use cycles anyway, so I might do it this way. But I might also not want it to be a global thing. What I did on the on the Star Wars shot is um, I, I set a certain amount of global ambient occlusion fairly low just to give a, a general fill for everything. But then in certain spots, I wanted to add a little more. And that's where this next method comes in. Let me switch back over to Eevee. So for that, for one thing, let's make a new collection and just call it lights. Put our sun in there. I'm going to move it up to the top. No, nope, not in the camera, to the top. Okay, and then in there, I'm going to create a new light, an area light. I'm going to move that over here. What I'm trying to do with this method is kind of emulate the way you would photograph something if you were doing like a miniature in real life, where you would have a bright light source and probably a bounce card uh, to bounce some light into the darker areas. but you can do that. You can set up a, like a plane with a diffuse material and let it bounce light into there, but it's, it can get kind of noisy and, and you may not want to deal with that. This tends to be a bit cleaner and also this works in Eevee. That method won't work in Eevee. So anyway, let's make this really big and maybe a little wide just to cover the ship. And by default, it won't look like much because area lights need a lot of power. It's at 10 by default. I'm going to put it at, let's say 500. Yeah, that's pretty good. 
maybe a little more. Let's make it like 800. Okay, so that's all right. You got your your key light and your fill there. And that's most of what I would do here. You might see that on certain parts of it, it gets a little dark, so maybe you want to add another one. You could uh, duplicate that. Let's just shift D. Move that down and under to kind of light the bottom of it and then move it back. Ooh, move it, don't scale it. So then there you go. You could have a little more even light there. Let's do another one of those actually, now that I'm thinking about it. And just move it up above, rotate it so that it's pointing down. Just didn't like the way that shadow was hitting that. And again, I tend to just move it back to change its intensity. And there you go. We've got a nice sort of fill surrounding everything. Look at that, it's beautiful. Now, the problem with this is that if you start moving your ship, you're gonna see that you move out of the range of the lights. So to get around that, what you could do is you could take all of your lights and make them a child of your ship, but that's not really the best way to do it because if your ship rotates, then your lights are gonna rotate with it and that's gonna look strange. Uh, so what I prefer to do here is take, let's just take one for now. Go over here to the constraints and add a copy location. Set it to use the X-Wing. It's gonna change the location entirely, but this little thing offset here will offset it based on its original position. And then anytime you move the ship, the light moves with it. But then if you rotate the ship, oops, the light stays where it is, which is much more realistic. You wouldn't want that to move along with it. It would look very strange. Just, well, you wouldn't want it to rotate along with it, I should say, that would look weird. So let's put this back in the middle. And, and then we can do that for all the other ones. Let's see if we can do more than one at a time. Never tried that. Copy location, X-Wing, offset. Did that work? No, nope. seems to only do one at a time. Maybe there's a better way to do that. I don't know. Well, there you go. So now, anytime this moves, let's switch over to here so you can see what it's doing. Those move right along with it, but they will not rotate with it. If they did, it would look bizarre. And that just about does it. That's pretty much all you need to do. That's space lighting, fairly simple. And again, you can switch this back over to cycles, give my computer a moment, and there you go. It's pretty damn similar in cycles and in EV. Although I think in cycles I might still have the ambient, no, turn the ambient occlusion off. Well, there you go. That's space lighting. It's really not that hard. Don't overcomplicate it. Space is fairly simple. It's usually just the sun and nothing else. In this case, the fill is there to make it a little prettier. Um, and that'll do it. All right. Hopefully that answers any questions you have about lighting.